evening, good evening, saints of God, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is, good night, whatever time it is, wherever you are. We invite you once again to our Wednesday meeting, our Wednesday Bible study, where we study the Word of God. This is Destiny of Christians International Ministries. We welcome you once again. This is another day, another Wednesday that the Lord has given us. He has allowed us to see this day so that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord wants to tell us today. Hallelujah. We continue with the topic of judgment. And it has been very interesting. We have learned very many things. Those who began with us the last two weeks when we started the topic of judgment, the Spirit of God has been revealing very deep truths and we are learning. We are maturing. We are growing in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for tuning in. I know there are those who have tuned in. It is maybe at night. There are those who t have tuned in. It is in the morning. There are those of us who live where we live. It is in the evening. It is about 8 p.m. And we want to say thank you for tuning in so that we can study the word of, of God together. When we study the word of God, darkness is removed out of us and we walk in the light and the light is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is how we mature by studying the word of God. And last time we were very encouraged. We were, we were encouraged a lot by what we were taught. Many of us thought that it is God who is going to judge us at the end. And then some of us thought it was Jesus Christ. But then the word of God God was telling us it is the very word that we study that we shall judge us. Hallelujah. And so at the end of the topic, we found the need of studying the word of God. Going for people study, studying the word of God together, asking the spirit of God to give you revelation of the word because it is the very word that will judge you and me. Hallelujah. It was such a very interesting topic. And today we continue with the same topic, the judgment. And I know that the spirit of God is going to teach us many, many more things things. He's going to bring revelation to you and me of the word that we did not know. So we just want to say thank you for joining us. I want to say thank you for the people that are writing us to encourage us. Hallelujah. And those who are praying for us, we thank God for you too and we pray for you. Hallelujah. Those who are helping this ministry to continue doing what the Lord has called us to do, we are so grateful and we thank the Lord for you. So tonight, we begin the topic once again. We continue with the judgment. And this is a topic that we shall continue until when the Lord will give the teacher the time to conclude it and to finish it. But for now, we continue with the topic of judgment. I would like us to open with a word of prayer and be encouraged, saints of God, whatever you are going through, when we pray, the Lord hears. The Bible tells us that he has inclined his ear to hear us when we call upon him. So whatever you are going through tonight, whatever spiritual battle you've been going through, whatever disappointments that has come your way, even those who are sick in their body, believe that tonight as the word of God comes, the word of God will touch you, the power of God will touch you, the anointing of God will touch you and be, bring healing into your body. Even those who've been struggling, maybe in their mind they are anxious because of the many things of this world, when we continue with the teaching of the word, let the peace of God come upon you, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. So tonight, believe that the Lord knows. We may not mention your need. You may not even tell us your need, but the, the Holy Spirit knows what you are going through. He understands you. He is the design of man's mind. If one sparrow falls, how about a child of God? And God knows. How about a child of God? So I know that the Spirit of God tonight understands your situation and He will meet you tonight at your point of need in Jesus' mighty name. Let's open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you tonight and we want to honor you. We want to exalt and glorify your holy name. We've come once again, my Father, so that we can study your word. Heavenly Father, we have no wisdom of our own only the leading and the help of your spirit. That's why tonight we ask of the spirit of God that he may be with us from the beginning to the end. Holy Spirit of God be the teacher. We surrender ourselves before you the way we know how. And Father, we confess of every sin that we have committed. Because you are merciful God, we ask you to forgive us. Wash us with the blood that was shed on the cross for us. Give us clean and pure hearts that are acceptable before you, even tonight, our Lord and our Redeemer. I want to lift up the listeners, those who are tuned in now, and those who will replay this, this teaching later on, maybe weeks, maybe months and years to come, that the anointing you are releasing tonight, King of Glory, will touch them, will meet them at their point of need. I want to lift up 
my father, those who are sick, that your healing will touch them tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. There are those who are grieved and they are mourning at this time. Father, let the Prince of Peace visit them in a mighty way tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There are those who are anxious because of many things of this world. Oh God, I am praying, Lord, that your peace will rest upon them today in the mighty name of Jesus. And every issue that is represented, oh God, you know us, you know our needs. So, Heavenly Father, it's my prayer that as the teaching goes on, it is your word and your word is power. May you meet each one of us at our point of need. Tonight, I want to lift up the teacher as he brings the word. I want to declare without the help of the Holy Spirit, he cannot teach. So, we pray for wisdom. We pray for understanding. We pray for revelation that come from you, O oh God. Hallelujah. As we continue to humble ourselves under your mighty hand and declare that, my Father, without you, we can do nothing. We invite your Holy Spirit at this place, O oh God. God, as we take authority in the name of Jesus and sanctify the whole studio with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify the dwelling places of your people with the blood of Jesus. And Father, we declare now this is your place. This is your altar. Oh God, speak spirit of God. Minister spirit of God. We step aside and allow you to move in a mighty way tonight, touching your people, meeting them at their point of need. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. At the end of it all, you honor are worthy to be worshipped, you only are worthy to receive the glory. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed and the saints of God say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, take yourself a notebook. I know some of you have been writing books because they have been sharing. And write the questions that you come across that you want to ask. Write us. You'll be told our email where you can uh, send your, your, uh, your questions. And we will try to answer. And the teacher has been trying to answer the, some of the questions as we've been continuing with the program. Some of the questions I know have been answered. But if your question has not been answered, please write us. We shall be able to come back to you. And maybe one of the days when he shall be teaching or he shall have a time of uh, questions and answers, he'll be able to answer your question. But for now, I want to welcome the man of God, the founder of Destiny International Ministry, to come and bring the teaching of tonight. The topic continues, judgment of the believers. God bless you, saints of God. Welcome them to this teaching. We are going to be blessed together and we are going to open the teaching with a reading of scripture and I would like to ask you to go with me to the book of Romans chapter 2. This is going to be the basis of tonight's message. Romans chapter 2 and I will read these verses from verse 1 so that we understand what we are dealing with as we continue with this wonderful topic of eternal judgment or everlasting judgment at the end. So Romans <clears throat> chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Therefore you are inexcusable, O men, whoever you are, who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But verse 2, I would like you to mark verse 2. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think... O men, you who judge those uh, practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness, and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and liberation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. And verse 11, if you can jump to verse 11, it says, For there is no partiality 
with God. I believe all of us know by this time that every Christian is in a journey. And we have been journeying together from the time we started this ministry. And we know that we are led in this journey by six basic uh, teachings in the Bible. And we have been drawing our teachings from Hebrews chapter 6 and verses 1 and 2. And according to those two verses, the journey of a Christian consists of six steps. The first step is repentance from works that are called dead works. That is the first teaching that begins the journey of a believer. Repentance from dead works. And after repentance, we are taught how to continue with the journey by the second teaching, which is faith toward God. Because after repentance, you begin moving by faith towards God. And after that, <clears throat> we come to the third instruction, which is baptisms in plural, because there are many baptisms. And you go through that third step of baptisms, baptism in water, baptism in the Holy Spirit, and so on. And you then move on to another step, the fourth step, which is the laying on of hands. And after that step of laying on of hands, we move on to another teaching, a foundational teaching, which is resurrection from the dead. And finally, there is the sixth teaching, which is eternal judgment. That is where we are. This is where we have arrived. So basically, this is the journey of a Christian. For those who have been following us, I believe you have learned a number of things concerning the Christian journey if you have followed every step of the way. Now we have come to the end of the journey of a believer and we are actually answering the question that we started with at the beginning of this ministry when it was launched. A question I was asked by many people who were actually near, near uh, dying. They had only a few days remaining. And the, uh, the question they all asked is, where am I going? What is the end of my journey? Now we have come to the end of the journey. And it is going to be very interesting to all of us because the Lord is teaching us when we resurrect, then what? Because that is the last thing as far as a believer is concerned, as far as a Christian is concerned. We need to know, yes, there is the resurrection. Then what happens after resurrection? And this is what happens after resurrection. We come to what is called eternal judgment or everlasting judgment. To remind you of one or two things, according to Hebrews 9 and verse 20, 27, a Christian has two, uh, um, uh, two things he, he must meet. There are two meetings that everyone must meet with. And the first meeting is the meeting with the death. It's an appointment. Apart from those who are going to be raptured, everyone else has an appointment. And there are two appointments. The first appointment is with the death unless you are raptured. The second appointment is after that comes judgment. We find this stated in Hebrews 9 and verse 27 that it is appointed for man to die once and then comes judgment. Now we are at the end of the journey. We are about to embark on the last phase of the, of the journey of a Christian, which is judgment. 
Last Wednesday, we learned from the Bible that God is not going to be the judge <clears throat> because he delegated the judgment to his son, Jesus Christ. And we also learned that in turn, Jesus will not judge anybody because he says he did not come to judge anybody. He in turn has delegated the work of judging to the word of God. God. So if ever you had not known who is the final judge, it is the word of God according to the book of John 12 and verse 47 to 48. John chapter 12 <clears throat> verses, uh, verse 47 to 48. We are told clearly there that it is the word that has been spoken from the beginning that is going to be the judge of everyone. So keep that in mind. It is the word that is the final judge. So we ask this question, which is our topic. What does the word tell us about judgment? <clears throat> because now we know the judge is the word. So, does the word, in the word of God, does it tell us how the judgment is going to be done? What are the principles of judging? Or what are the standards of judging? Or what is going to be applied when the judgment takes place by the word? Or what are the rules of judging by the word? Now, there are four main rules that are going to be applied during the time of judgment by the, by the word. The first rule or the first standard or the first basis of judging people by the word is on the basis of truth. We have just read that verse in Romans chapter 2 and verse 2 that the first Thing that is going to be looked at is truth. You and me and everybody else, we are going to be judged on the basis or on the standard of truth. Now, truth does not change. Truth does not vary. It is the same from everlasting to everlasting. It does not change. Father, the word of God is truth. That is what we are told in the word of God. So if you wanted to know what is truth, truth is the word of God. And you can find this uh, written in the book of John, chapter 17, <clears throat> and verse 17. And it is Jesus who actually said this. He said when he was praying for the disciples, he said to God the Father, Father, your word is truth. So you do not have to wonder what is truth. Truth is the word of God. So we are back to the word. So the very first standard of judging will be on the basis of truth. Because truth does not change. It is, the tr it is truth from everlasting to everlasting. That is the first standard. Keep that in mind because we are being told by the word how the judgment is going to be carried out. The first thing, it is going to be carried out on the basis of truth. And the truth is the word of God according to the Lord Jesus Christ. The second thing, the second standard or the second rule that is going to be used on the basis of the word is according to deeds according to actions, according to activities that we do here while we are still uh, uh, alive. And this is mentioned again in the verses I've just read for you in the book of Romans chapter 2 and verse 6. I also want to remind you concerning deeds or the actions that we do here on earth. In the book of Revelation, if you can recall, Revelation 20 and verse 12, we are told that the people who resurrect in the last resurrection, at the time of judgment, we are told 
that your books were opened. And I taught you during that time that the books are personal files that are kept for every human being. They contained every action, every work we have ever done from the time we were born. So in the book of Revelation, chapter 20 and verse 12, we are told that the people who resurrect in the last resurrection, they will stand before God for judgment and they will be judged according to the deeds that are written in the books. Remember I told you about the books? Always remember there is a file that contains every activity that we do. So, the second standard or the second rule of judging by the word is according to the deeds that we do. Which now brings us to a very important point. Mind your deeds. We must do deeds or activities that are variable. We must do activities that are pleasing God. And I have talked about that before in the topic of faith. A deed is called good in the sight of God if it arises from faith. We are doing it according to the faith that we have. Anything that is done out of faith is not a good deed. But I want you to know whether good or bad, every action, every work we do, every deed that we do, it is written in the books. Remember that. The reason for writing all activities in the books is for the purpose of judging according to the deeds. Now, as you talk about deeds or activities, I have just mentioned that we better mind our deeds. What kind of activities are we doing? Are they acceptable before God because everything is being recorded? So you and me, we need to be careful. What kind of deeds are we doing because everything is written down? More than that, I want to mention something concerning this second standard of judging according to the deeds. It is not only the physical deeds that are going to be judged. It is not the actual activities that we do that can be seen by people. No, there is more to it. We are also told there are some hidden activities in our hearts. And those activities are described as secret. And those activities the world does not see because they are within us, but they are activities. Let me give you a perfect example that Jesus used. He said, if you look at a woman lastly, you have already committed the sin of adultery. There are many things, not just adultery, there are many things that we do inwardly. There is action that is taking place within us. These are the hidden works of darkness. That is what they are called. They are hidden uh, works of darkness. But I want you to know that even these, which are not seen by the human eye, they are also written in the books. They are hidden, but God sees them. In other words, the intentions of the heart. What are your intentions? Are they wicked or are they good? Whether they are wicked or they are good, they go into the records. Mind what you think. Mind the intentions of your heart because those secret things, they are also going to be judged. We are told, according to um, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, and when you read verse 12 to 13, we are told that the word is actually able to judge our deepest thoughts. 
We are told in that chapter, chapter 4 of Hebrews, verse uh, 12 to 13, that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. And it is able to discern the secrets of our hearts. It is able to divide um, spirit and marrow. In other words, it discerns what is my intention. Let me give you an example. There are people who are after publicity. They are not interested in uh, um, ministering to people because people are hurting they are trying to build up a name so they, their intention is not the people. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. All they want is to be popular. That is an intention that can be discerned by the word of God. In other words, when we begin to think thought in our heart, in our mind, we must judge those thoughts and intentions against the word of God. We ask ourselves, okay, I am thinking like this. I have this intention of making a name for myself because I want people to know me. I want people to know how good I am, how wonderful a preacher I am. That is my intention. You ask yourself, what does the word of God say concerning that kind of thinking, that kind of intention? And the word is going to tell you it is wrong. That is why the word is a discerner of the deepest secrets that are not visible to the, uh, to, to the external world. So there are external things and there are internal things that are going to be judged. They are also deeds, even if they are not seen by the rest of uh, humanity, but they are within us, they are also recorded in the books. Remember that. This will make us very sensitive as to what, our, uh, what are our intentions in doing the work of God that we are doing. Is it to popularize ourselves? Is the intention to make our name great? Is the intention to be called a great speaker? Those are intentions and they are within us those who are outside, they will not know my intention. They will not know that I just want to be popular. We have a big problem today in the body of Christ. With the men and women, they are after publicity. And because they don't care about the ship, they are hired shepherds. The world today does not need hired shepherds. The world today, because it is full of people who are hurting, the world needs people who are seriously concerned with the affairs of other people, not about themselves, but people who care about the ship. You can imagine if my intention is to make myself popular, and here in the church, I am ministering uh, just to draw attention to myself, to make a name for myself. And right there inside, as I am ministering, there is somebody or a number of people who are hurting deeply. They are wounded. They do not come to hear someone boast about how knowledgeable they are. They come because they have a problem. They are hurting. They have wounds. There is no time for playing games of publicity. There is no time in God's uh, calendar for people to be drawing attention to themselves and the sheep are forgotten. The good shepherd takes care of the sheep. The good shepherd does not care about himself or herself. It doesn't matter whether people like you or not, as long as you are doing the will of God. Hallelujah. So I want you to remember, there are things that are inside here. They are also being recorded in the books. Because the word tells us we are going to be judged according to deeds. That is the second rule of judging. Remember the first one is according to the truth. 
The second one is according to our deeds, our actions. And the actions include external and internal. The third one I want to mention quickly is this. That the judging will be impartial. There is no partiality. The word is impartial. It does not consider whether you are a great man or a great woman or a nobody who is never seen anywhere. The word does not care whether you are wealthy or poor, whether you are a king or just an ordinary person, the word is impartial. It is applied to everyone equally. Whether someone is a king or just an ordinary person, the word is impartial. So this is the third principle of judging impartiality. The word doesn't care whether I am a great preacher or not. The word does not care whether I am known by people or not. That is impartiality. And the word of God says, God is not a respecter of persons. In other words, to God, it doesn't matter how great I am. What matters to God is my heart. Is my heart right with him? That is what counts. So that is the third principle of judging during the last judgment or eternal judgment. Judgment is going to be based on impartiality of the word. It is going to be completely impartial to, to uh, um, uh, the people who are being judged. It will not um, distinguish whether this was a king or this was a, a highly intelligent person or a scientist or anything like that. The word will be impartial and will be applicable to everybody equally. Now that is the third rule of judgment by the word, impartiality. So we have now three of them. According to the truth and secondly we have seen according to the deeds we do both internal and external and now thirdly the impartiality of the word. It is it, it's not concerned about our condition or who we used to be. It is impartial. The fourth one, because there are four rules that are going to be applied as we are told by the word. This is the word that is teaching us how judgment is going to be carried out. It's going to be carried out according to the truth. It's going to be carried out according to the deeds that we have done. And thirdly, it's going to be impartial. And fourthly, we are told again by the word of God that judgment, fourthly, will be on the basis of the knowledge Everybody was exposed to. Hallelujah. Let me repeat that because this is so um, important. Judgment will also look at how much knowledge was accessible to you. How much was presented to you. How much did this person know about the word of God? In other words, when judging, the word is going to look at the amount of revelation or the amount of knowledge that someone was, um, uh, was, was, uh, was, uh, had an access to. How much knowledge was available to a particular person? Now, this is very, very important. It means this. The more we know the more we are exposed to, the more revelation we have been given, the stricter the word is going to be applied in judgment. Now, this means this. If you are a minister, you are a teacher of the, of the gospel, when it comes to judgment... The word is going to be very strict on you as a teacher, a preacher, whoever you are as a minister. But we know that there are people <clears throat> who do not have access to the revelation 
that is available in the word of God today. Which also answers a, a very important question that people wonder about. Maybe our parents or our four, four, four parents, when they died, they died with, without ever hearing the gospel. They died without the knowledge of this book, the Holy Word of God. And the question that is asked, how are they going to be judged and they didn't know anything about the gospel, the, the, Jesus was not presented to them, the Bible was not available to them, now hear the answer to that question from the word of God. And the answer is this, according to the word, the word is revealing to us, that judgment for those people will be based on the amount of knowledge that was accessible to them. They will still be judged, but it, the judgment will depend on how much was made available to them. How much revelation did they have? So that angle is going to be considered by the word of God, which is a very encouraging thing to many of us who ask this question. My Maybe my generation, they died, um, my former generation, they died without knowing the Bible. They, they, they were not, they didn't have the Bible. Um, Christ was not preached to them. So what's going to happen to them? Now, this is the answer. They will be judged according to the knowledge that was available to them when they were living. Now, in connection to that, I want to share something very unique concerning what I have just said. In the book of Matthew, chapter 11, Matthew, chapter 11, verses 20 to 24, Jesus was preaching <clears throat> and he reached a point when he addressed the cities he was preaching to. And he addressed three main cities, Bethsaida, uh, Capernaum, and Chorazin. This is in Matthew 11, 2024. Now, listen to what Jesus said concerning these three cities during the time he was preaching to them. Well, they were not paying attention. Yet, they were, being, they were given the revelation of the word by Jesus himself. So this is what Jesus said. He said, Woe to you, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. And he said, the word war is like saying you are doomed. So he said, Woe to you cities to which I am preaching right now. Why? He said this. Because... If these other three cities, which I'm just about to mention, that is Sidon, Tyre, and Sodom. All of you remember Sodom, but Tyre and Sidon were also very wicked and they were destroyed. But Sodom, you, you know that it was destroyed together with Gomorrah. But this is what Jesus said when he cried out against the cities he was preaching to. He said, woe to you, you cities. You are hearing me. I am giving you revelation of the truth, but you have rejected it. Woe to you. Because if Sodom and Sidon and Tyre had they had the opportunity of hearing what you are hearing, they would have repented long ago. Hallelujah. Mm. Now, what is Jesus saying? He is saying, here you are, you cities I'm preaching to. You are receiving revelation after revelation, but you have rejected the revelation. And then he said, during the time of eternal judgment, it is going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Sidon and Tyre than you. Why? Because those cities 
Sodom, Tyre, and Sidon, they never had the opportunity to hear what you are hearing today. So it is going to be more tolerable in judgment for these wicked cities. You do remember a city like Sodom, it was a wicked city. And here Jesus is saying, it is going to be better off for Sodom than you cities because you are exposed to all the revelation that you need in order to repent, but you reject it, you refuse to repent. Now, that is a powerful statement. Because I tell you, today, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to many people. We are exposed to revelation after revelation. Right now, in the mercy of God, He is revealing revelation after revelation as we study His Word. Now there is a warning then. Because we are being exposed to this kind of revelation, we have the Bible, we have Christ being preached to us, we have everything. But even now, many people are still rejecting the revelation. They ignore it. They don't even want to hear the name of Jesus Christ the Lord being mentioned today anywhere. They have rejected the revelation. I say in the words of Jesus, Woe to everyone who has received revelation after revelation and they still continue to reject it. They still continue to refuse to repent. Hear this. Sodom, which was a wicked city, at the time of judgment, during eternal judgment, the Lord says it is going to be more tolerable than people of today and tomorrow who are being exposed to the gospel, who are being exposed to the truth and they continue rejecting it, and they continue refusing to repent. This is why this word is so appropriate when Jesus said, Woe to you, you cities, because I am giving you revelation, but you are rejecting it. And then he said, The wicked cities of Sodom, uh, Tyre, and Sidon, they will fare better than you during the time of judgment. He used these words, It is going to be more tolerable. In other words, judgment will be more lenient to these wicked cities than to every city or to every person who, who is exposed to revelation and they continue to reject it. Hallelujah. That is the point. This is why judgment is going to be based also on this other rule, the general knowledge or the general revelation that is made available to every person. Now, we have a very interesting verse in the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 48. Luke, chapter 12, and verse 48. It says this. This is Jesus who is speaking. He says, To whom much is given, much will be required. To whom much is given, much will be required. In other words, to whom a lot has been revealed to, much more is expected of that person. That is the meaning of what Jesus was saying. He is summarizing what we have just said. The more the revelation, the more strict the word is going to be when it is going to be applied to those who had the truth compared to those who did not hear the truth. So we have four principles. We have four rules given by the word of God according to which judgment in the last day is going to be carried out. I repeat them again. The first standard or the first rule is according to the truth. The second rule is according to the deed or the works we have done here 
including the internal deeds we do that are secret. And the third standard is according to the word being impartial. In other words, there will be no favoritism at all with the word. And the fourth principle, the fourth rule of judging will be based on the amount of knowledge available to every person. Tonight, therefore, we have tackled what does the word say concerning eternal judgment. It says those four things. The four standards I have just given to you. As I end this message, let me say this. When you think about what the word is telling us today, it is important to understand that the word is emphasizing the need for obedience. Secondly, the word is emphasizing we must not hear the word and we become indifferent to it. Once the truth is revealed, we are going to be held accountable. Mm. So the most important thing to remember is that we must learn to obey what the word of God is telling us. And secondly, we must not be indifferent after we have heard the truth. Now, next one is the God willing. We are now going to go a step further in this process of eternal judgment. Now that we know the word is the basis, and now today we have seen the four standards or the four rules that are going to be used when judging, we now come to another very interesting topic concerning eternal judgment. We are going to study the different faces of judgment. Who is going to be judged first? Who will be judged uh, second? And so on. Because judgment is a series of judgments. There is one group that is going to be judged. Another, another one is going to be judged. Another one is going to be judged. So the question we are going to tackle is the order of judgment. Where Shall judgment begin? Who is the first group to be judged? And with that word, I pray that the Lord will minister to this word to your heart. And I pray that he will write it in our hearts so that we begin to live it, particularly knowing that the key thing about all this is obedience and avoiding indifference to what we have had. The Lord then bless you and the Lord keep you until we see you next Wednesday at the same time. Praise God. Praise God. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Welcome to Destiny of Christians International Ministry. We do air live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. via uh, Facebook. And I do welcome you to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all our current and past teachings as well. Uh, we are still on the last step of a Christian's journey, which is eternal judgment. And today's topic was, what does the Word of God say about internal judgment? And we have learned that there are four rules or four standards of judgment. One is according to the truth. Two is our deeds, whether it's internal or external. Uh, third is the judgment will be impartial. And fourth one is the judgment will also be based on how much knowledge we had access to at that time. Amen? Amen. And with that, may God bless you and may the Holy Spirit continue to minister to you throughout the whole week. And we shall see you all next week on Wednesday at 8 p.m. God bless.